cell uses a number of mechanisms to transport material across the membrane. Some types of transport require the cell to expend energy and are called active transport, whereas other types of transport do not require the use of energy and are called passive transport. Passive transport is the most common way to transport material in and out of a cell, and it occurs as a result of the random movement of molecules, in other words, due to their kinetic energy. Because the energy to move these molecules comes from the molecules themselves, passive transport does not require the cell to expand its own energy in their movement. Even though each molecule moves randomly, the movement or diffusion of a group of molecules may be directional. Small molecules move across the membrane down their concentration gradient through the process of diffusion. The molecules move from an area of high to an area of low concentration, eventually leading to a state of dynamic equilibrium, where the concentration of molecules is the same on both sides of the membrane. In living systems, the cell membrane and other body control systems can operate to prevent equilibrium from being established, effectively maintaining a concentration gradient indefinitely. For example, the constant movement of oxygen into cells is achieved because the cells use the oxygen continuously, maintaining a sharp deficit inside the cell. Facilitated diffusion occurs when materials diffuse across the cell membrane with the help of membrane proteins. Even though a concentration gradient still drives the diffusion of these molecules into the cell, their polar nature prevents them from passing through the hydrophobic region of the cell membrane. Channel and carrier proteins shield such molecules from the repulsive forces of the membrane and allow them to diffuse quickly into the cell. Keep in mind that the rate of diffusion is limited by the number of specific transport proteins in the membrane. In addition to the number of transport proteins affecting the rate of diffusion, there are several other factors that can also do this. One factor is the nature of the diffusing substance. For example, heavier molecules diffuse much more slowly than lighter molecules, and nonpolar substances diffuse across the membrane at a higher rate than polar substances, as they are less soluble in the cell membrane's phospholipid bilayer. Another factor is the physical environment in which diffusion is occurring. If the temperature or pressure of the environment increases, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, causing the rate of diffusion to increase. Earlier we described diffusion as the passive transport of any material across the membrane. Osmosis is a type of diffusion that only involves the movement of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane. Water molecules are constantly diffusing across cell membranes in all living things. The water molecules diffuse across the cell membrane through channel proteins called aquaporins. The direction of water movement is based on the relative concentration of solutes on either side of the membrane. Water will move from where the solute concentration is lowest to where it is highest, or more concentrated, until an equal solute concentration is reached on both sides. When thinking about the behavior of a cell in a solution, we have to keep in mind both the solute concentration, or the osmolarity, and the membrane's permeability. Both of these factors contribute to tonicity, the ability of a solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water. There are three types of tonicity. In isotonic conditions, the extracellular fluid has the same osmolarity as the cell. Movement of water into the cell exactly balances the amount of water moving out of the cell. These are the ideal conditions for most animal cells. When a cell is in a hypertonic solution, the extracellular fluid has a lower osmolarity than the fluid inside the cell. In this case, solute concentration in the extracellular fluid is lower than the solute concentration inside the cell. This results in water moving into the cell and the cell swelling. If the concentration difference is extreme and excess water is not removed, cells may burst or lyse. In hypertonic conditions, the extracellular fluid has a higher osmolarity than the inside of the cell. 
because there is more solute outside the cell, water will flow out from the cell until equilibrium is achieved. As a result, the cell shrinks as it loses water. This impairs the cell's ability to function or divide. If the solute concentration difference is extreme, the cell may lose so much water that it dies.